Um, I know he's a tough guy, and uh, Kevin Moore, and I, I know he's got the experience and everything, and it's it's going to be a fun fight. I think anywhere, wherever the fight will go, I think I can uh, pretty much expose him anywhere. My job is uh, not complicated. I knock uh, people, and uh, I, I'm come here for do this, and uh, that's it. Kevin Moran, get ready for a battle. It's going to be a good one. Uh, the good fighter. Yeah, I think it's a good fight. Maybe the best fight of the night. Well, we are in for a treat every single time that Kevin Moran fights. It is a nasty one. He comes from this... Legion of Badass is called Team Legion in Victoriaville, Quebec. And uh, Team Legion led by Steve the Snake Clavaux, a pioneer in Canadian mixed martial arts. He sets the tone in the Victoriaville gym. Every one of these guys is tough. They, uh, they have lots of skills, they bring it every time, but they've got just some little extra special, a little extra toughness that you don't see every day. And Robin, this would be considered enemy territory at another time if you were Kevin Moran. This used to be warfare between Adrenaline MMA, Team Tompkins, and Team Legion. They had a brilliant rivalry in the old TKO promotion. Now Kevin Moran's been welcomed in with open arms, and you could tell that yesterday when you saw Alex Gasson shake his hand at the warm-ups. Yeah, there's something about these guys, too. As vicious as they are, and as aggressive as they are, and as ornery as they are, they're also secretly quite lovable characters. So you get to know Steve Claveau, and this guy likes to lick his own blood. He, he himself has eight wins, eight losses, and a draw. That's a fighter's record. And Kevin Moran out here with eight wins and five losses has faced some of Canada's toughest a 155, including Alex Ricci, tonight's co-main event. And he fought him to a vicious draw, or a vicious uh, a decision, too, that, that Ricci won. Well, coming into tonight, Kevin Moran had won three of his last four, and his opponent, Kyle Prepolik, had lost two in a row going into PFC 1. But he was able to bump the slump when he knocked off Adam Asenza, and he also holds a Bellator win over Lance Snow back in April 2012. Yeah, this Prepolik kid is fantastic. Incredibly skilled, really slick, and very cagey, very cagey. You know, you, he shows you one thing and you get another. It's hard to read. And as a fighter, that's an incredible skill, you know, to be able to be, have, have your opponent sense that something's coming and really something else comes and hits him. And, and Kevin Moran, if this one does go the distance, which it usually doesn't with Prepolek, whereas Moran is so tough, it often does. Moran has been the distance seven times and he's won five of them. Prepolek lost his only decision three round fight. So if it does, the longer it goes, in theory, on paper, it favors Moran. And I would have to agree with you there, Robin, because you look at those three of the last four that Moran has won, those were all by way of decision, and even the loss to Ricci was a decision fight. Kevin Moran likes when it goes for all 15 minutes. Kyle Preplick can wane as the fight goes on, but ultra, ultra tough. Yeah, any of these guys that gets in the cage, they're, they're a little different up in the head, and Prepolek is definitely <laughs> fairly different. But uh, these guys who seem to like going 15 minutes, these grueling 15 minutes, there's something wrong with those guys. And Moran is one of those guys. He likes to make this a long, mean, the tough fight. The following is presented by Drive Time Ontario. This bout is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the PFC lightweight division. Introducing first, the man standing to my left and fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet nine inches tall and weighed in at 154 and one quarter pounds. He is a Muay Thai kickboxing and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu specialist. His record, eight victories, opposite five defeats, fighting out of Victoriaville, Quebec. Kevin Moran! His opponent stands across the cage to my right and fights out of the red corner. He stands five feet nine inches tall, his official weight and even 156 pounds. He is a kickboxer with a professional record of six victories opposite three defeats. 
fighting out of Windsor, Ontario, Kyle Ripley. Kyle Preplick with an extensive fan following here at PFC in London, of course, just down from down the road in Windsor. And you'll see him come out in the white trunks, Kevin Morant in the blue and green Under Armour trunks. And we are underway. Preplex, a southpaw, and he's a very, like I said, he's cagey. He's very deceptive. You're, you can't really get a read on him. See that nice check hook with the right hand as uh, Moran comes in? That'll get him to think twice. Kevin Moran has a really odd stance. It's very hard to read. He's very loose in the cage. Prep like landed that jab on the exit as well. Same thing. He's sort of starting really early to teach Moran that it's going to be dangerous to come forward on him. Good check of the leg kick by Prepolik. I said he's trying to teach Moran that it's hard to come forward on him. He's a very hard guy to teach that to. Yeah, Prepolik likes to dictate the fight. And right now, Kevin Moran is driving his way in. You know, these guys, they say, uh, you know, they like to fight. They don't mind getting hit. A lot of those guys are lying. You know, most guys, nobody really likes to get hit. But there's something weird about this prep like kid. I think he kind of does. And that scares me a little bit. He's a lovable dude. Well, he feeds off, and you can see it there. Two combinations landed, left, right, left, right, from Kevin Morant. And prep like wore it and walked right through it. He comes from that. Oh, oh, caught him hard. Morant backing him into the cage, swarming all over Preplik, who recovers back into the cage. Morant wants to back off and keep going. It was a hard overhand right off the inside leg kick. And wow, look at Morant getting aggressive here. Robin, this is the best I've ever seen Kevin Morant. He looks real good, man. He improves all the time. This toughness, these instincts, these fighters' instincts, finishing instincts, the, all these Victoriaville guys have that. But he's really putting his hands together very nicely so far tonight. And against the southpaw, nice very deceptive southpaw. Speed, speed advantage, definitely the way of Moran, but Preplik is wearing those punches. And now he's got a history of this. He starts off a little slowly, eats some punches, then gets better in, into that middle round. Third round doesn't always have all the gas tank, but he comes on a little bit here after he wears a few. And Moran is really leaning into these. He's sitting down on these punches early here. He's in great shape, Moran. And when you, oh man, those right hands, he's just putting everything behind him, turning the hip heavy. Yeah, that was a beautiful right hook. And now Moran again answers. Preplik's coming forward with one, and then Moran's answering back with two and three. You know, Moran is doing the right thing here with Preplik. He's hard to read, so don't read him. Go in and initiate, and that's what's that's really working for Moran here. See that exit jab? Now that's the second time Preplik has landed that, and he landed the hook, but Moran is ignoring it, and he's coming forward. His ability to take these punches is letting him push the, the pressure on uh, Preplik, which is working for him. And that's gonna be the little battle here. Can Preplik get him to stop pressuring by landing the shots when he needs to? Or can Moran overcome Preplik's desire to do so and implement his game? Preplik tried to reach forward and Moran caught him on that reach. Preplik was able to spin out from underneath the punch and get back to center cage. Moran again catching him over the top of that right hand. Yeah, uh, Moran's always been a right hand guy. He's always had a heavy right. And the southpaw's tough to fight, but the one advantage is that right hand is straight there. You know, there's a straight corridor for the right hand to land on the chin. So if you're a right hand guy who really uses a straight right and an overhand right well, fighting the southpaw, that man, he is delivering that thing. Fighting the southpaw gives you that opportunity. Both fighters landed hard in that last exchange. Preplik's left and Moran's right. Preplik now going back to using some feints. That's a good, that's a sign that he's mentally very much in this fight. He's thinking and he's learning. Moran did catch a nice inside leg kick there as Preplik did not check it. But Kyle Preplik again just walking forward. Moran tries that Superman punch and Preplik oh! all the way in. Huge head kick, flying knee into the cage and Preplik now bringing it oh! forward. Uh, Moran just jolted his head back. Moran is incredibly tough. Preplik also landed an elbow in the inside there, the double flying knee. Look, at Moran's already recovered. We talked about his toughness and that ornery toughness out of that gym, but there's something in these guys. That was a heavy head kick and a heavy knee and a heavy left elbow. And he's, uh, he's recovering here. 
and it's almost like a brainwashing thing from Clavo. You can see it as he stood up and he yelled and ran, you're okay, and it was almost like Rand went, yes, I am okay. Exactly, exactly. These guys want to perform. The, like I said this earlier tonight, the high-level coaches make you want to perform for them. Even when it's something like, you're okay, it's like, yes, coach, I am. And he's right back to that right hand that's been working. Unbelievable. What a great first round so far. I said when we saw Preplex start fainting that he was uh, he was learning. And uh, that's the thing with a kid like this. Okay, you're hitting me. Well, it doesn't really bother me. I'm learning something from what you're showing me offensively. He's adapting in this fight, and he finished very strong. I don't know how, you, uh, how you're going to score this round because Preplex did more damage, but Moran landed more. Unless somebody does something dramatic in the last seconds. Oh, I would not want to be a judge in that first round. Great round of action to open this fight. Robin, this is exactly what we were expecting from these two. Yeah, uh, all the educated people, all the pundits, the people that have been, you know, the press, and, and some of the, the fighters who've been watching, excited to see this card, kind of tag this one for a potential fight of the night. You can see why. Their styles are really conducive to this kind of action. Interesting. Uh, Prepolek started by trying to stop Moran moving forward. Moran refused to stop moving forward, and that forced Prepolek to have to adapt and find one big one. That's exactly what he did. Really tough round to score, man. It may go that way just on the strength of that leg kick to Kyle Prepolek because when he landed that, everyone down Meteor Road jumped, the fans jumped. That was one of the best strikes we've seen tonight in any fight. And uh, they just signaled that they want to touch gloves. The crazy thing about dudes like this, both guys are really enjoying this. This is all, This fight is really just getting started, baby. Watch as they touch gloves, they're like, oh, I found a guy just like myself. Great, let's have a fight. Oh yeah, there's a lot of mutual respect here. You can see it. And it's gonna be hard for one of these guys to put the other out. Nice right hand landed there by Moran. Back prep look up, but only for an instant. Uh, prep, both have great coaches. I was talking about Snake Clavo, but uh, Cal Prepolex coach Reno Belcastro, he's a very smart guy, and he will have adapted, he will have amended the plan a little bit here based on the aggression and the right hand uh, uh, reliance of Kevin Moran. So watch for a few changes in how Prepolex approaches this, although Moran, he, didn't, he doesn't care. He's just gonna do his thing. Moran has been walking forward with those hooks like Vandalay Silva. Like Moran choosing to go to the body now. Now it in, introduces one more aspect for Preplek to think about when he sees that right shoulder move. It's like, yes, I gotta protect my face, but what if he keeps going to my body? If you make him think it's going to the body, you drop the elbow, you get knocked unconscious. Moran tried that double hook over the top and he almost caught Preplek as he was backing up. It would have been a tough one on that second time as Moran got everything on it. Now again, backing him up. Moran coming in a little bit wild with those hooks, Robin. I'd like to see it a little a little bit more straight. Yeah, but yeah, I don't think you're gonna, <laughs> because this kid is, is, is motivated by his desire to land big punches, not motivated by his desire to show off the beauty of his technique. And because of that, you know, the way that it's coming is the way that it's coming from his heart. Well, exactly, it doesn't have to be beautiful, but it's been getting the job done so far in this fight. And he's come out here with a little bit extra in the second round. So many incredible things about uh, getting this, you know, to, to sit cage side and, and watch something like this. And really a great fight like this is how two martial artists express themselves. Yes, it's violence, yes, they're fighting, but these guys, you're seeing the expression of Moran's desire, and you're seeing the supple skill of Preplek as he again lands on that exit, moving back, disengaging on distance and landing. This kid is so slick and so fun to watch, and how it's easy to understand how fun to watch Moran is. Preplek not really finding a home for that left hook on the end, but he's finding a nice home for that right jab to start the combination. Yeah, and he's, he's doing well with the right hand, to, the right jab to end the combination as well. See, now he's fainting again. When we saw him go back to that mentally, it worked for him in round one and it's working again. It's a sign that this kid is cluing in on something. And we saw it again there and it worked. Preplik found the left hand on the way out there. That's where the power lies for Kyle Preplik. It's that dangerous left hand. And he almost found it right there. That could have been a fight ender. He's doing really well now, controlling the distance. Okay, Moran's coming in. We're gonna control the distance, either step out on an angle or disengage enough and land as on the end of his uh, thrust, on the end of his rush. These two throwing almost simultaneously with one another. That's making it harder and harder for them to hit. And now Moran diving forward for the takedown. Preplik jumps back up with the single. 
You, the best way to get there, oh, Prepolek, just great balance, great positioning. Now the front face lock, this is a nice spot. He's gonna do very well from here as he thinks about a Dars. And that's a miserable place to be if you're Moran. You're just getting pulled by the head and neck towards the back. Yeah, and the chest pressure on the back of you. You have to carry the other man's weight, and there's a lot of attacks you can do from there. And even when you get up, there's a knee coming up the middle at you. Prepolek going high again with that back leg kick. Let's see if he tries to tuck one into the liver now when he suggests that. If Moran goes to protect himself from it, see if one tucks into the liver. That would be the Jesse Ronson special. Yeah. God, any kick to the liver is a Jesse Ronson special. Of course, so many great fighters come out of London. Mark Hominick, the late great Sean Tompkins, one of the best coaches ever. Chris Clements, who's here tonight, the list goes on and on. Sam Stout, one of the most exciting fighters. The most exciting fighter ever to come out of Canada. So many good ones, and uh, you know, it's a great place to, ha to have this great, educated, passionate combat sports crowd, and they're digging this fight. Oh, this has been a beauty. Victoriaville's Kevin Moran. Windsor's Kyle Preplick just swinging back and forth. Oh, and now Moran landed a nice uppercut, two knees, and Moran stays on his feet. He has got a hell of a poker face, but he is hurt. The uppercut hit him in the sternum, and uh, then the knee up the middle. He is in a lot of trouble. This kid hits hard. He's going to the body. Oh, he can't uppercuts. keep it up. Moran diving forward. Preplick's got to pull back and land a few more. He might look for a knee to the sternum here or punches the smart kid, man. He can tell he's hurt. And now Preplick just battering away on Moran, who kicks him off. Moran is so tough, man. When that thing hits your rib and it touches your liver, you get all these enzymes released to poisons the body. He'll have a hard time standing now. He may try to protect his body. It's an opportunity for Preplick to land to the head. See the low elbow? That's protecting his body. Coming through the running flying knee. Coming through the running flying knee. 10 seconds left in the round. Oh, what a kick. Just glanced it. He's got to get behind that jab now again. There's only a few seconds left. Do some damage. Wow. That first round was super close, but round two is all Prepolek. And Moran is going to need to use this minute. Look at, he's going to need to use this to draw some oxygen in there, to flush that lactic acid, to fully recover. He's got snakes having him sit straight up to draw oxygen into those lungs. He hurt him. He hurt him bad. When was the last time, Robin, you saw a flying spin kick used inside the cage? Yeah, you step through with the right leg and then you throw the left up and over, kind of a butterfly kick. You're not going to necessarily land that, but respect to Prepolek for giving it a go. He nearly did. He glanced him on the end with it. I think it was more to give the judges a look at what he can do, but... Well, and to, I guess, give Moran some things to think about, maybe dishearten him a bit. But he doesn't know Kevin Moran if he thinks he can dishearten him. That guy was finished. That was a done deal. Those shots to the body, finish 99 out of 100 fighters, but you don't finish Kevin Moran from Victoriaville, Quebec. And they're going to touch gloves again, coming to center cage for round three. These two guys are just as tough as they come. Moran now going to the jab, may try to use that to set up the right. There it is. Prepolek just steps into him with the front kick, back Moran off a little bit. Prepolek's going to have an opportunity here to go to the body, and if it blocked, you're, you know that he's going to be really protective of that. It'll open up that side of his face, the right side of his face, for your power left or left kick. Looks like Prepolek's got a nasty cut right on the inside part of the nose. He won't be feeling that right now. He'll be feeling that at the after party. If he wins, he probably won't feel it at the after party either. But uh, we got five tough minutes before you even start thinking about who's going to win. And you got hard right hands coming over the top at you. Moran caught a piece of him with the right, just missed with the left. Rappler tried the low leg kick. Moran trying to jab through with the left hand. Couldn't find the range. Talked about Reno Belcastro, uh, Prepolex coach. He wants tough fighters for his guys. You know, we live in a world where people look for the, oh, a nice counter left hook by Prepolex. And a lot of fighters are looking for an easier path. A lot of coaches are looking for an easier path. But Reno believes in testing his guys, and Moran is a giant test. We don't know who won round one, so although Prepolex got some good momentum, this is anybody's fight. Absolutely. Moran could steal this one very easily. He had a great round one. It depends on how the judges saw it. We were pretty much in in, oh. in lockstep, Robin, that that round one was a toss-up. It's another kick lands, and now the Superman right back through from Moran. 
whether it's fatigue, whether it's those shots to the body, undoubtedly the shots to the body play a role, or it's the teaching that Preflex has been doing. He's got Moran hesitating a bit. He's not blitzing like he did earlier. So this is good news for Preflex here. Moran's trying to hide his chin back a little bit as he steps forward. Doesn't want to leave anything open for Preflex to land at. I, Prep, that is the first real commitment to a body shot from Preplek. And some people might go, why isn't he going to the body? Because he's smart. He knows that Moran, an educated, tough fighter, is waiting for a body shot to counter. So instead of hurrying up and rushing it, he's waiting. He's getting him to think about some other things, but it's still coming. As soon as Preplek There's that feint again. Last time, last two times he's done that, it worked really well. It set him up somewhere. As soon as Prepla goes to the body, Moran's gonna come through to the head. You're exactly right, Robin. He knows that, and oh, answered with a beautiful left hand. <laughs> and a bloody face, <laughs> Kevin Moran uh, invites him in. He likes this kind of stuff. I know that's hard for people to comprehend, but every human being is different. And these two are, we use the word warrior a lot, but it's just in these guys to do this. And to get to do it in front of all these people and on television and show their skills and their toughness and their heart to the world, that's what these two young men are about. You just get to autopilot at a certain point and it feels like that's where those two are. They know they're in a war, but they've just hit that autopilot switch and they're throwing everything they can at their opponent. All instinct now as oh. Preplik catches him, comes in with the head kick. And Moran again, staying on his feet, backing away. Preplik showing a beautiful, that beautiful zone right in between finishing instincts and patience. Just that hot zone right in there. He's waiting, he's doing his damage. If it isn't there, he's waiting again and setting it up again. He's very mature tonight as Kyle Preplik. Robin, Moran is answering well, but you can just take a look at his legs when he's moving. It's not that fluid motion. He's got a little bit of the spaghetti legs going. Kevin Moran is just incredibly tough. We'll go back and we'll watch this fight and we'll count the head kick, we'll count the flood, the double knees, that punch, the huge punch he just ate, on and on and on throughout three rounds. And uh, Kevin Moran is still here. The, the body shot that would have crippled just about anybody else. And Moran is still in here, putting on a show and doing exactly what Kevin Moran always does. Three punches missed, any of those could have been a fight enter. There was bad intentions behind all of them as these two really finding homes on the hooks. People don't always realize, I mean, hey, we don't know what it feels like to play football. We don't know what it feels like to play professional hockey. You don't know what it feels like to be in. Every one of these impacts is big. When they, those two met in an attempted takedown and some takedown defense, that impact is huge. Most people, that would be enough to say, I don't want to fight anymore. That just excites these guys. And you get to see a beautiful performance between two guys like this, and these fights are what it's all about, why we love the beauty of martial arts. Preplik came forward with a nice left hand again, just missed following up with the right as Moran backing up. We said off the beginning, the longer it went, the more it favored Kevin Moran, but it, it, for no other reason tonight other than he gets the chance every single time to land that big punch. But tonight is Kyle Preplik's night. You gotta think he's, t oh! Kyle Preplik is showing a new gear in this fight. Moran tries to come forward here at the end. I said, oh man, uh, the ref was questioning the blood here, but you know what? I was saying I thought Kyle probably took round three, and then that giant knee that sounded like he just hit an infield triple, that put an exclamation point on it. You gotta think, a couple of judges saw 29-28 for him. Maybe a judge saw 30-27. Kevin Moran is my hero when you see toughness like that. But Kyle Preplek is a winner, and man, did he look good. He's limping now. It hurts to knee another man in the noggin. And Robin, that last knee to the face of Kyle, or of Kevin Moran, pardon me, from Kyle Preplik, opened up a gash over the right eye of Kevin Moran. And uh, for Kevin Moran, that's just a little color. He doesn't mind, he's, he's accustomed to this. This is what this guy does. Takes a certain kind of man to get in to a cage like this, and, uh, and woman, like we have tonight in the main event, two fantastic females, top 115 pounders in Canada. But it takes a certain kind of person to do this, but it takes a whole other kind to walk through that fire when you're getting hit over and over again, like Kevin Moran did tonight, and keep showing that desire to win. Almost a shame we don't get two more rounds of this one. What a beautiful fight. But Kyle Preplik looks like he'll come out on top, Robin. He definitely got rounds two and three. Round one may have gone the way of Moran. We'll have to get the judges' scorecards to make it official, but I've got a 29-28 Preplik. Preplik is a talented dude, man. He's like, 
We went over it. He's very deceptive. He's very cagey. He's very skilled. But tonight he put his foot on the gas at the right times. He showed patience at the right times. He's a very mature young man. He's only 24 years old, but he showed a lot of maturity in here. This is a good fighter, man. He's a good martial artist, and he had a tough one in front of him tonight. A lot of guys, it's hard to keep that gear going. He did it. And perhaps the biggest note, as we're about to go into the cage to Mike Markham, Kyle Preplick got better as the fight went on. He found another gear. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the judges' scorecards for the final decision. Kyle Costello, John Patrick Gula, and Jason Rogers all score the bout 29-28 in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. Kyle Crippley! Gentlemen, Kyle Prepolek, what a fantastic display of mixed martial arts here. I'm amazed at that double jump knee, man. Walk us through that. Um, well, I'd like to thank uh, the, my coach and corner staff. They helped me with that. Paul Russo, Reno, and Phil and all them. They helped me uh, set up all that and helped me uh, watch out for everything uh, that he's got, you know. I want to thank them and all my teammates and everyone who helped me out for this. And, uh, and friends and family, of course, for support, and the whole PFC staff and everyone who came today. Thank you so much. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Street Soldier for the sponsor, Boston Pizza, and the support local fighters. Thank you so much. Kid just had a now, crazy fight round, and talking like he's you know, had a, uh, 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 a Thanksgiving right, dinner with his family. Momentum into the second round and into the third, he just absolutely were dominating with crazy. the range. That little uh, uh, in and out boxing that you were doing, fantastic. Can you walk us through that? Have you been working on that? And what are we going to see next? Uh, yeah, I've been working that a lot. And, you know, I like to watch a lot of like Mark Hominick because he usually does that like, little thing, but he comes back more. That's what I got to work on, and uh, I'm sure my team and everyone will help me go through that, get better with my combinations. And that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, your winner by decision.